name's Bill Bellotti. I'm a professor at UWS. I'm the Vincent Fairfax Chair in Sustainable Agriculture and Rural Development. I think it's brilliant. You know, what, what a great thing for UWS to be associated with. Well, you've got all these young motivated people that are interested about saving the world, and here we are, UWS as part of the solution, part of the future. I was talking specifically about um, food security, future food security, given climate change and all its impacts. And I talked a little bit of a couple of things. One was the idea that we had to reconnect people, as you and me, and consumers with food producers. So that's looking at supply chains and how current agricultural systems have become quite lengthy and consumers are distanced from producers, and that's not healthy. So I was talking about other ways of food and people interacting. So that was one thing that was very exciting. The second thing is uh, an idea of producing food in greenhouses, which are very productive for food, uh, also very water efficient, so that'll be important in a climate change in the future. But the third thing that's really exciting about these new designs in greenhouses is that they can generate electricity. So you're not just producing food, but you're also producing electricity that can go into the grid. There's a prototype in Europe, but I'm interested in developing the concept here in Sydney, um, particularly to see how this design would work in our climate and just seeing what, what potential it has. The idea is uh, a Plants absorb light, you know, they're basically solar collectors. They're, they're converting sunlight energy into food that we consume. That's primary production. A greenhouse or a glasshouse is a way of um, modifying the environment for plants for high food production. So they've been around for a long time. The new design that I'm excited about is based on technology that has a film on the glass that allows some of the sunlight energy as the photosynthetic active radiation that plants need to photosynthesize and grow, but it reflects the other radiation, the near-infrared radiation, which is a different wavelength. And instead of just reflecting it away, because it, it, it's a problem in the glasshouse, the glasshouse gets too hot. What this does is, because it's a curved, a curved roof on the glasshouse, it ref concentrates the reflected infrared on a either a photovoltaic cell or a thermal solar system, which can generate electricity. Well, I've, ju I've just gone to see this film called The Future Makers, and it featured a whole range of future alternative energy sources. So there was photovoltaic, solar photovoltaic, solar thermal, uh, geothermal, wave energy, and I met one of the people that were featured in the film. I met Professor Graham Morrison, who's a, from, he's from the University of New South Wales, and he's an expert in thermal uh, solar technology. And I was able to talk to him about potential of using that sort of technology in a greenhouse design. So it was very useful for me to meet Graham. Well, in my own area, we, my research is very applied, so I'm always focused on how this technology can be commercially developed. And so the greenhouse idea is no exception. Um, for it to have an impact in food production, it's going to have to have a lot of uh, investment, and that investment would come from private companies in, involved in the food industry. So there's, there's a sort of proof of concept period of research, and then the industry people can come on and, and scale that out. And uh, it, it can only happen with industry. <laughs> Well, I think it's critical. The universities have a really important role to play in the future of society, not just for education, but for conducting research and solving real-world problems. Um, but we can't do that in isolation. You know, we need to collaborate and work closely, partner industry and community, and uh, we need to work together. <laughs>